All right, grab yourself a cup of kappa. We're gonna talk. Uh, I have decided that this is um, the video one for the childhood trauma recovery group. Mm -hmm. Specific to children who had narcissistic mothers, especially. I wouldn't know what it's like having a narcissistic father. But when the mother, when the mother is the major caregiver, it's 24 seven, that woman's um, pestering you and with her opinions of who you are. So grab yourself a cup of cuppa. <coughs> <coughs> I'm outside and I just inhaled and this cat demands that I pet it. He will bite me if I don't. <laughs> So what you're going to do is you're going to, there's going to be a combination of things. Me petting the cat, me going over here to get a drink and hoping the cat doesn't run into my glass <laughs> or my can. All right. That's a napkin, my leopard shoes. Shall we begin? Okay. So. Welcome. This is Cat Woodland. I'm a cat sitter. This is Ricky, one of my cats that I watch. Uh, Ricky is a 12-year-old um, cat, I think. And the, by the looks of it, he will continue to live well into his years. And he's loved. So the quality of his life is really high. He's loved. He gets uh, plenty of the three A's. He gets attention. He gets affection. He gets acknowledgement. He gets acknowledgement. He does. So we pet him and pet him and pet him and tell him he's such a handsome boy. Yes, he is. Get him back here. They love their shoulders done. People who don't know how to pet cats, um, freak cats out, because cats can tell you're not comfortable. You know? Because truth be known, this cat could like, turn into an attack mode and like cut my wrists open <laughs> and I'd have to put a band-aid on <laughs> and rush off to the emergency room. You know? Ah, so people need the three A's just like animals do. We need attention and we need affection and we need acknowledgement. So let's consider that in your life. So now I'm addressing the children of narcissistic mothers and now we're adults and we haven't gotten over it. Uh, we uh, did our best to, to bury it and forget it. We did our best to move on and, 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 and up and out and and yet the patterns that were there, the denigration and the voice in our minds that makes our life less fulfilling goes on and on and on and on because it's the voice that was created by the trauma of your childhood. And your subconscious mind has been playing on automation mode in the background of your subconscious. So, you know, uh, people, it would behoove you to get into art, just get a, a, a pad and pencil, some charcoals, paint, go to an art store, take a class, uh, do something creative, make videos like I am, music, dance, a garden, something that you're really getting into a creative mode where you're not thinking about it. Like I'm thinking about how I want to present material. I'm going to be doing the Williams, William James material. I decided in a formal fashion, like a classroom fashion, whiteboard style. But these conversations that I'm having are, are going to remain the casual long ones. And I made funny videos as a way in, the, in my most recent past uh, to really, alleviate myself of the stress once you you realize that you are indeed 
um, the child of a narcissistic parent and that it has affected your life so gravely that you don't want uh, to have anybody else have to suffer at the level you did. So I'm doing this as a service to mankind. I'm also doing it as the ability to be able to give voice, to actually express myself in ways I never have been able to before. And it's that giving voice that's so important to yourself. And so I welcome you to send an email to ityogaguide at gmail.com of your most personal shit and then request I delete it after you read it. Um, I'm not going to print it out. I'm not going to post it. I'm not going to read it unless you request me to. And I, and I will can read your story if you want to hear it read. Okay? To give voice to it, to give witness to it, if you're not able to give it to somebody else. And I certainly am not going to spend the... Um, $300 a session shrink that it would require for an entire year for them to get me. I mean, like they're, they're just not going to get me. And so instead, I am getting myself. And I'm not a doctor. And this is not advice to you. I am not a licensed professional. I am not a suicide counselor. I'm an unqualified. Uh, I'm unqualified as a man, but I'm a woman. And I am experienced with life. I've had uh, the, I've had two marriages. I have a, two two children. They're grown adults. I'm a grandmother. I work for myself. Um, uh, it's a very modest living, and I'm developing myself more into who I really am, doing what I consider my work in alignment with the divine. Because I've done the. I had the man in the house and the job thing. And all that stuff I really, really wanted. The marriage, the house, the man. Well, the man comes first, actually, but don't do any don't do too much Freudian slip shit, alright? Sometimes the words just flow out of your mouth the way they do. But um, I've always just wanted love. And a place to be with that man. My fantasy growing up was that I would meet somebody and they would love me. And they would see the goodness in me that I knew was there. And I knew that I had was criticized all of my life. And I had a hard time getting people to know me. Because if they knew me, I was, I was certain that they wouldn't like what they saw. And this is probably something, if you're in your early 20s, and you're a, a child of a narcissistically abusive parent who verbally abused you with emotional abuse and treated you like you were uninteresting and didn't really care about your activities, okay? That's all abuse. All the while, they told you you needed to be grateful. Beggars can't be choosers. You ought to feel lucky you have a roof over your head. Don't waste water cleaning yourself so your your hygiene would not always be up to standard because you'd be wasting water. Don't spend too much time in front of the mirror. So if you're in your 20s and you're having a hard time letting people in, that's why. Uh, along with the criticisms that I'm not going to go into. I'm sure you remember yours. If you stop this video for now, put it on pause, recollect all the things your mother said to you, all the trauma that she put you through, all the hurt feelings, all the not good enough, all the criticism, all the unnecessary ridicule, all the unfair judgment. You're not very pretty. You're not very friendly. You're really not that smart. I graduated 12th in my class, GPA. Okay? I was invited to go to all the, the places for the academically gifted, okay? My mother uh, had me and the entire family take an IQ test, and I was a genius. I was like in the 
what he, up, up, like the, was it 120 or up, something up there? 140? I don't know what it was. But pattern recognition, and I remember that it was test because there was like a game. I mean, it was an enjoyable test. It wasn't stressful. It was fun. <laughs> anyway, um, my mother uh, was almost angry at me when she told me that my dad and, my, and myself, she said, you know, your father knew score genius. And she wasn't happy about it. So, of course, I didn't uh, recognize that as something that was good. Of course, I didn't recognize that as acknowledgement from a neutral source. I actually was intelligent. Amazing. Amazing, right? Absolutely amazing. So if you're in your 20s or even beyond that, and you have a low opinion of yourself, even though everybody else around you sees you as quite gifted and quite good at what you do, or maybe, you know, they really like who you are, get to know yourself, get to like yourself. You're probably really, really cool. And uh, you never got to know yourself the way you really are because you had to hide yourself because you were ashamed of yourself because of your mother. And so I had a hard time getting to know people, letting them in, because if they found out who I was, they might not like me at all. Angel trumpets are blowing and the trumpets are blowing. So, if you need to stop the video and cry, do it. And then do some movement, like belly dance shimmies. I'll teach all that. Those are the things that when I am working through a tough emotion and then when I hit a breakthrough, and then you can feel your body shudder because you're getting to the trauma, you're getting to the meat of the matter, that's healing. That's what we're doing. All we're doing is unearthing the unattended feelings that are stuck in our bodies. Because it's emotions. We need to get the energy in motion. It's stuck in your body. There's a reason why you can't move sometimes. There's a reason why you are lethargic. There's a reason why you fall into malaise. There's a reason why you can't seem to get going. Okay, so give yourself a break. Forgive yourself for being human. Forgive yourself and then say your body, thank you body for having the wisdom to let me know I need to slow down way, way down and I need to unearth this so that I can heal it. And finally, I'm gonna pay attention and finally I'm gonna express myself and I'm gonna do it through my art, through my painting, through my music, through my communications. Yes, write that email uh, to ituka-guide at gmail.com. I'll get to, back to it, and if I don't, you've expressed it, but I will get back to it, depending upon the flow. I'm a young channel as far as um, starting to actually create a pattern. I have a, I, I'm an old channel, but I started back when YouTube was YouTube and now it's with news and then they changed the alg algorithm. So if you found me, it means you sp I'm speaking your language and we're healing together. This is a, a group journey. So yes, this I'm going to consider this uh, day one for group healing um, all alone virtually in your own space, your own lovely space and create your own place to listen to this, the own place to be. So I got the sun in my eyes and at twilight I like to do sun gazing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing some sun gazing. Yes. Yes, I turned 60 in January. Uh, so I'm well into that and I'm a, now considered a crone. I uh, am an elder. I'm an elder wise woman. I've lived many years and that's why I'm telling you 
it doesn't serve you to bury it and to forget about it and put on a happy face and act like you're not hurting inside or not paying attention to why you're not reaching out to people, why you're feeling badly about yourself, why you're just not doing what you need to do to, to, to have relationship in a healthy way with peer groups and other people. Now, I'm well into my uh, relationships. I, I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. We're not going to go into my life other than to give you a backgrounder to show you what kind of uh, success I've had. And I, I've, I've been successful and uh, having relationships, but only because I was willing to sacrifice so much of myself for them until I was not able to do it anymore. And it's because I did not know how to recognize what a narcissist was because when I met them, they were drawn to me as the giver, which I became in my family to my mother, making sure she was given the praise. She cut my hair when I was a freshman in high school because I was too pretty. And I had too many people telling me that and she had too many people hearing it. So she had to take my beautiful long hair and cut it. And she pestered me for three nights in a row, on and on and on and on and on. And now something, I hate her. And she wouldn't let me say that when I was a kid. I'm gonna practice saying it and I'll find out later whether or not it's harmful to me, but I hate her. And I'm saying that to that person in that moment. I'm looking at that woman doing what she's doing. And know what I see? I see a hateful, angry woman who is just like the queen in Snow White. And so she did take out my heart. She ruined my year. She ruined my freshman year. I was having so much fun. I was so happy. I was looking forward to school every day. And then she cuts my hair and all the lights went out and I became angry and she got her away. And that's why I hate her. But I think I'd hate myself even more if I kept my light dim, which is why I am doing this work because we are going to shine our lights bright people. And we are going to head into the light of the beings of who we are. We are going to learn how to do energy alchemy. I'll do that head stuff. We'll do that whiteboard presentation, but we're also going to do energy alchemy in which we envision light around our bodies. We learned about the chakra system. That will be a presentation more formal in case you don't know about it. And also I'll explain it to you in a way that you may not know about it. And we will go into all of that good stuff. But uh, take a look at my other videos if you're just getting to this one. But we will be doing, essentially this is the introduction and day one of the healing sessions for children who were raised by narcissistic parents, especially a 24 seven narcissistic mother who made your life living hell. Okay, lots of love. Do what you need to do to process. But feel the gladness in your heart that you weren't destroyed. Feel the gladness in your heart. She couldn't destroy you. That demon or that jealous, envious entity that took over. That she basically is a three-year-old in an adult body. And when you look at her, like she's a pitiful, pitiful, pit pathetic person who competed with her own daughter who diminished her own daughter so she could feel better for her, about herself who stood in the way of her daughter's accomplishments who accomplished anyway to her chagrin I'm going to shine that light even brighter all right, people, lots and lots of love.